Right. Come out early morning. And I'm going to be using sidewind loads. Now I had a cracking session on these the other day. I thought I'd come out, give them another crack, just to prove that it wasn't a fluke. Now this one absolutely slayed it for me the other day. And it's a Skerry's 6 inch heel in pearl. And all I'm using is I'm just using my uh, my spinning setup, which is an Amora 8 12 to 20 and an Abu Cardinal reel with 20 pound braid on it. Now these lures, I find that they're quite good for a fast retrieve. And I had a fantastic day fishing with them. Just kind of straight wind or wind and bounce. Oh, this one. Sun's just coming up and I'm fishing just under the cliffs. You can see where the cliffs are. I like my lures in natural colours, blues, whites, greens, silvers. They do take different coloured lures. Like one of the best lures that I've seen for fishing on the wrecks is uh, rhubarb and custard, which is <laughs> yellow, and orange, yellow and red. Now, what in nature is yellow and red? Doesn't make any sense, does it? it's all in what you've got confidence in. We're drifting quite fast here, I didn't expect to be drifting this fast, we're drifting nearly two knots. The little patch of rock just over there, we've just gone over and I was hoping to fish over it for quite a bit. Instead, because we're absolutely steaming along, go back round and have another go. That's what I'm fishing. That was a hit. Yep. Wow. <laughs> well, it feels like a bus. Yep. Oh, a lovely bar of silver. Oh, that's a cracking fish. Cracking fish for first thing in the morning. Look at that. Ooh, easy. Look at that. There's the eel right in its mouth. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? I want to get a photo of him. He's a stunner. Haha. <laughs> Back. Oh, well, that, did, that went well, didn't it? Yeah, I found that these lures worked well with a fast retrieve yesterday. 
So I've got a good paddle tail. <coughs> oh. Where are you going? <laughs> well, don't need any more proof that these lures work. Whoa! <laughs> Come on, lad, calm down. Look at that. They are fantastic fun. Pop straight out. Look at that, clean as a whistle. There is a little bit of crosswind now. These lows. They aren't the best for casting, they haven't got an awful lot of weight in them. All I'm fishing, like I said, was 20 pound braid. I like, I like 20 pound braid, 20 or 25. Just because, if you get snagged in any kelp or anything like that, if you've got 20, 20 to 25, I find that quite often you can pull it out. You can pull the kelp out rather than snap it off. And I've got about uh, eight feet, eight to nine feet of fluoro leader. Uh, usually on my rods, I have a rubbing leader. But this isn't a rubbing leader. This is an actual leader leader. Because um, fluoro is practically invisible under water. You see that? I'm, uh, sometimes it's just a straight wind like that. Other times I'm doing like a wine bomb, wine pipe, wine pipe. Just just to make the lure move differently in the water. Sometimes you'll find that the fish will be low down, sometimes you'll find that it'll be high up. You seem to like these lures. Oh, 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 yeah. Digging hard this one. <laughs> Whoa, he's all over the spot. That is a fantastic. He has absolutely hammered that lure. He absolutely nailed that lure, can you see? Absolutely nailed it. It's too deep for my fingers to reach it. There you go, there's the lure. Back he goes. Every time I drift over that rock, bang. Let's cut my hand up. Let's go back and try that rock again. Ah, I'll tell you what, I'm loving this. <laughs> As I was trying to say about that bass there, we're covered in spikes. 
they've got them pretty much everywhere every fin has got spikes on it and they've got a real big one at the side of here which has just lifted the end of my finger up so you've got to watch them all I'm doing here you can see here where the cliff kind of comes out to a pinnacle well that carries on under the water and the tide is drifting in that direction so what's happening is the fish bass are sitting on that side of the rock the rock comes up like that and goes like that and they're sitting on the back side of it so that any little fish that come over the top of it in the tide they just shoot up and get which is why fishing an eel like this it's highly visible when it's still a little bit dull I mean the sun's not properly up yet it gives a good silhouette and they can see oh, oh, oh. As I was saying, it gives a good silhouette and you can see when it's quite dull. So it's perfect. Like to this. I told you just as we went over the top of that rock. big spike just at the back of here and each one of these is a spike just like that Cracking when they take them up high. They've got some fight in them this morning. He's absolutely smashed it, hasn't he? They're feeding well this morning, I can give him that. Yeah, as the hook, if you can imagine, that this is like the hook, this is the fish's mouth, and the hook stuck in like that. If you can put the forceps in, the hook is stuck in like. Ah, come here. The hook is stuck in like that. If you could put the forceps in, get hold of it at the bend, push it out like that, and turn it, just pull it out. That's how I found is easy anyway. I've drifted away from that rock. We'll go back and have another go. When the sun comes up, I'm going to change to a different lure and we'll try one of them out. Right now, in these conditions, I find these lures to be absolutely killer. It's one of the good things about these, these lures being bright as well. It's because I'm retrieving it fast, look near the surface. You can watch it coming. And you can see bass following it. This is just a thing to note as well. You 
because you'll see which way my boat is pointing. Even though I'm drifting in this direction, the front of the boat is that way. So if for whatever reason, like if I start getting too close to the cliff, I can just steam straight away from it. If my boat was facing the other way, I'd either have to go around or I'd have to go in reverse. Just something to note if you're fishing close to the cliffs like this. Came back for that twice. Only a little one, but I saw it snap at the tail and I missed it. So all I did was I just dropped the lure back in. Well, different people have got different ideas of, of what to do if you get like a strike, if you get a miss. I said it was only a little one. Barely get the lure in his mouth, can I? It's him using them spines. Yeah, what I did was, I just let him strike the tail of it. So all I did was I just let, let it drop. I stopped winding and I just let the, let the load drop in the water. Because what I was, what in my mind that means is, if it's a bait fish, if it's like a little pilchard or a sardine or a little mackerel or something. Try one last cast here. If it's a little pilchard and something's come up and hit it on its tail and wounded it, it would be, it wouldn't be swimming away real fast, it would kind of sink in the water wouldn't it? Which is what I thought would be the best thing to do. So a strike would be like, ah, and then it would start sinking in the water, which was, you saw happen there. That spike where that bass got me on my fingers, right on my casting finger. Taking a bit of damage, it's low now. It's one of the things I like about them as well. Oh God. Is they can take a bit of hammer. I mean, bass racking around and they've got hard mouths and teeth. And if you're using something like a fish minnow or a fish sand ale, they're really soft. I've had one fish on them before and they've come back and there's been no low left. These you can have a couple of three, four fish and they're still all right. Let's get back round on that rock. Give it a couple more tries, then we might move down there and give it a little bit of a try. There's another pinnacle just down there that I'm going to try this morning. That's another thing that's maybe worth seeing. As I keep steaming back up to this, this pinnacle here in front of me, I don't steam straight to it because I would have to steam over it. Steam round it and then drift over it. You can imagine, instead of steaming straight to it, you steam round it so that you're not steaming over the top and scaring the fish away. I love it when they kite around on the surface. As I said, a slightly smaller one. You'll see me doing that pretty much every other cast. As soon as I cast out, I'll check the drag. Not like it will have changed or anything like that, but if for any reason something's happened and your reel's locked up, when you get a good fish, you want your reel to be working properly. I love early mornings. I prefer to get up early and fish the morning than stay out late and fish the evening. It's lovely. Just look how calm and peaceful it is. Only really you and the birds and the fish. Don't get everyone steaming around crazy. You speed boats and jet skis and whatever the likes. 
really hurting now. <laughs> Currently drifting at anywhere up. Thank you. Didn't want that one. Drifting at anywhere between 1.5 and 2.1 knots. Didn't want that one eh? Had about four strikes at this as well. There's a pair of peregrines nesting on this cliff last year. I haven't seen them again this year. Sat down there last year and was up. And uh, the flock of pigeons outside the cliff. All of a sudden I just heard this little screech and like a pfft, look round and it hit one of the pigeons mid-air. Just like a massive eruption of feathers. Incredible. Another little one. Yeah. I could tell it was a little one because it was having to hit and hit and hit. Look at the size of the lure it's taken. A big one would have just thrashed it straight away first time. Organic's working just up ahead of us. They're incredible, them aren't they? Have you ever been there where organic, like organic flocks just dive straight in? Just like a Spitfire. Incredible. Go and try that little pinnacle down there. They've not, they've not been as many up there and they've been smaller these last few drifts. I'm wondering if the fish are moving down with the tide. We'll see. There's a bit of fishing gear coming up. We're going to end up drifting straight onto it. See how far off the cliffs we are. And yet we're in 34 feet of water. Just have to look at, just have to look at that. It just looks fishy, doesn't it? It just looks bassy. A stirred water and a little bit of fizz. Deep water close in and jagged rocks. Just looks bassy. What I like to try and find as well, I don't know if you can see it in the video, there's like a couple of lines where the uh, where the bubbles from the bubbles from the waves. I like to try and find them and cast along them. Not straight up and down them, not across them, but kind of diagonally into them. A little cove coming up as well, I'm just going to nudge it into there and we'll have a look inside that cove. I've had a couple of little bumps. Okay, no solid takes. So I think it's, it's not fish in the ambush. It's not fish like hiding behind a rock. It's just fish passing through. One of the things I've learned, you don't even necessarily need to have a fish finder or have an echo sound to be able to see what the seabed's like. If you want to know what it's like down there or out there, have a look back there. If behind you you've got a really gently sloping bit of land and like a really shallow cliff and clay, chances are that's what it's going to be like in front of you. If you look behind you and you've got a git load of jagged rocks, chances are that's what it's going to be like in front of you. If I was fishing these lows closer to the bottom, you'd likely catch wrasse. I'd likely catch the bottom, but you'd likely catch wrasse. There's 
a little spot about maybe 500 yards just down here where I've had some quite nice pollock. I found that generally I have to fish the lures deeper for the pollock. Just depends, some days the bass are sat right on the bottom, some days the bass are up high. Sluggish days when there's no runner tide, I found the bass are usually quite near the bottom. So slow jigs, slow fall jigs work fantastically in those situations. Just a couple of non-committal knocks. Could even be mackerel. Have a little steam up there and see if we can't find some. 25 feet of water. Still haven't found the bait fish again. Lovely looking fish in the morning sun like these. They do not get much better than that, do they? What an absolute stunner. Fin perfect. No messing about. Sometimes I've found if a fish is properly tired and you can tell it's tired because its dorsal fins down and it's just sluggish. Say so for instance if you've if you've had a proper good fight from one. You might need to hold it in the water. Oh, oh must have hit that one on the head. As I was saying, if a fish is if a fish is tired, fish is down. You have to revive it in the water, you have to hold it in the water until it's ready to swim off. When they're still like that and the spikes are all still up and they're still giving it big ones and you can feel it tensing in your hands. I found sometimes if you, you torpedo them in head first, not only does it give them like a bit of a dive into water so it's already in the water, but the little bit of like a drop sparks it off into swimming off. And we found the bait fish. Said there was a little rock down here, didn't there? Oh, there's a big grey seal just in there on the cliff. Two heavy strikes on that there. So the bass follow it. <laughs> I've definitely found that fishing them like against the tide. Pick up a piece of weed here. That'll kill it. Pushing it against the tide, so I'm bringing it back now against the tide. The tide's going in that direction, I'm bringing the lure in that direction. I found it makes the lure swim better and I get more takes. Catch them across the tide, but I found that it swims better drawing it against the tide. What was it saying?
to hit that hard, I'm going to have to get the forceps on this one. See? See what I was saying about them little bits of bits of foam. Now unfortunately with this one here, there's quite a bit of weed involved in it all. It's fouling the lure, I can feel the lure's fouled now. I don't know if you can see the weed in the water. All over. to this that was right underneath that tide line like I was saying but I missed it probably a small one see how look the tide line's going in that direction and I'm casting over it so like I was saying before a diagonal line across it No good fishing into this. Try a little spot I know just down here. See if we can get away from the weed. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just patches of it everywhere. We're going to have to move. Right, we've had our last drift through there. It's been a really nice morning so far, I don't want to push me luck. The wind's picked up, the tide's coursing through. We're, we're going through there now at like two and a half, nearly three knots. And uh, yeah, I've had a fantastic morning. That's been, that's been the second outing that I've taken out these uh, scary eels. These are six inch skerries and these are in pearl and they're absolutely killer. As I was saying before, until you've seen something work really well, you won't have full confidence in it. I won't be going anywhere without some of these with me in the boat. These are fantastic. I mean look, I've, I've, last, I've landed well over 10 bass this morning. And that, true, it's lost an eye and it's had a bit of a batter in the top of its head, it's broken a little bit. But if that had been something like a fish minnow, that have been smashed after two fish and they really do catch well and I was just fishing that on my Nomura 7 foot 12 to 20 pound class rod I mean it's and it's real whippy and this is just my Abu Cardinal reel 20 pound uh, 20 pound braid and I think this is 15 pound fluoro 15 or 20 I can't remember but I've only got what, one and a half times a rod so about 10 feet 10 feet of fluoro I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, let me know how you get on, let me know which are your favourite lures. If you, if you use these, let me know how you get on with them. But I found they were fantastic for an early morning and fast retrieve. The bass just nail them. Uh, I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you later.